How long? Yeah. Looks pretty good on my, my, my map. Does it? Yeah. Maybe it's just for, uh, because of the red Alright, here we go. This is commentary how to do a 100k ride. How to do a 100k ride with crews. We left, I think we met the guys at, uh, maybe it was 4 in the morning. You see, I got my light on. And we just cruise and we just come out of the 7 Eleven, got some more water and some more sugars. And so, what I recommend when you have lights on your bike, don't have them flashing if there's riders behind you. This is an Audax rule. From the Audax is like the uh, French ultra fucking round and ears riders. Basically, in France, there's like a cult of riders who ride really long distances 300, 200, 1200 kilometers. And the rule is if you're at night time, you don't have your light flashing on the back, you just have it solid state. If you're riding by yourself, by all means, have it flashing. But if you're in a bunch, out of respect for the riders behind you, you want to have your light on solid. This is safer as well because you can concentrate better, you don't have a flashing light in your eyes. And so we're, we're not too sure where we're going, we're having a look around. Uh, we've got Armin there, Jacob's behind the camera, and we've got Erwin, and we've got Mike as well. So Armin, he has some incredible fitness and some really good form as well. All these guys are fit, all of us are fit, but Armin, he has had a spectacular trip as well. This, he did the sub 30 up the door, to Tef, the beast. It's like Chris Froome's, Chris Froome's Swiss cousin. And uh, it's Jacob behind the camera, another young lad from Estonia, very, very, very fit lad. Just incredible how fit he is for such a, a young age. Incredible. He's got like legs uh, like a seasoned Tour de France rider. It's pretty amazing. And so we're just cruising along. The secrets for the 100k rides is just, just cruise. You can, you can sort of see the posture here, Armin. The, the, the locks are flowing in the wind. It's pretty cruisy. You know, enjoying the sights, a bit of camera sh shakiness, but we're just cruising. You know, there's no racing, we're keeping it sort of under 200 watts, spinning the legs out. That's nothing to fall on. You know, you can get out the saddle as well. You can see Erwin here, he, he's getting out the saddle, just sort of relieve the saddle tension, minimise friction and pressure. So you click it up in a harder gear. You're not pushing harder watts, you just sort of put it in a harder gear and sort of dance out the saddle for maybe 10, 20 seconds, and it just alleviates that groin area of the crotch, takes the pressure off the friction. That's the big tip, is get out of the saddle frequently. I get out of the saddle every few minutes. And just be aware if you've got riders behind you and you get out of the saddle, your back wheel may kick back. So you just sort of get out of the saddle slowly versus sprinting out of the saddle, just sort of rise slowly out of the saddle. And there's a few climbs here, so we're just cruising on the climbs. You know, keeping under 200 watts generally, just putt along. If you do have a power meter, it makes a big difference. Just keep it under 150 watts. If you're a female or male and you want to do epic shit, just keep it under 150 watts, you know. And if you're a bit fitter, maybe 200 watts, 250. But you soon work out what watts you can do for what distance. But if you're just starting out your first 100k ride, keep it under 150 watts, and you'll surprise yourself with how far you can go. We're going up a climb here. Um, and sort of gapping us. He's, he's just frisky. He's feeling frisky on the bike. And uh, he's like a diesel. Just stays in the front all day. And we can get the draft. It's pretty good. Uh, we're heading out. This is the start of the ride. We didn't know what's coming up. We didn't know all the mud that you saw at the start of the video was coming. We just thought this is going to be a nice little road loop. Erwin was going to, Erwin planned the ride. He's like, yeah guys, we'll just show you a nice 200k loop. Some hills in there, get some good views, get some good footage, and it'll all be sweet. Now my light's flashing. I wasn't aware of that. That's uh, bad on my part. But at daytime, it's not too bad. At night time, though, you definitely want to have the solid state for the riders behind you. Beautiful conditions, humid, warm, maybe 28 Celsius, look at those mountain peaks, beautiful. Good spotting by Jacob there on the Sony. Jacob actually lost his camera this ride, we did find it, but we, we spent it, me and Armin went up, we spent about an hour looking for it up the mountain, but uh, it did bounce out of his top tube bag, but we found it, and it's all good. This is a Sony, Get, gets the right footage, it's not too bad. I, loved, I do love the smartphones though, like the smartphones are just, the iPhone 6, the, the Galaxies, they're just such good quality for what they are, you know, they're just in your pocket, pop them out. The dogs, always slow down when you see the dogs, and if you've got riders behind you, just say dogs, and just sort of slow down, because the dogs aren't that predictable, and they may run in, run in front of your front wheel and crash you, and you don't want to break your collarbone, and you don't want to hit a little doggy doggy. So we're checking the maps again, not too sure which way to go, just checking the Garmin, I'm using the Garmin 1000, 
not sponsored. And uh, we just yep, we'll give the, give the, the green light, guys. This way, this way. So it's very very green in Thailand. Very safe. Not much traffic on this road, and the drivers are quite respectful. I really do enjoy Thailand. No road rage. You don't get road rage in Thailand. I mean, it's very like extremely, extremely rare. You'd have to be asking for it, begging for it, really. Quite rare compared to Australia. And we're going up a little climb here. We've got that jagged peaks. Jagged but wild bananas. This is quite steep as well. It looks not that steep, but it is quite steep. It just kicks up concrete. Whenever the road's concrete, you know it's steep. Because the tarmac just cracks. <clears throat> yeah. Jacob's doing it easy. Mouth closed. Mouth closed. Just easy. Just easy. Going up there, up the climb. Yeah, the concrete, they use concrete because concrete cracks less than tarmac. If they'd use tarmac, apparently, that's what I hear. Maybe if there's some road engineers who can add a bit more information, but apparently if they use tarmac, it cracks a lot easier, so the concrete's a bit more flexible, apparently. Um, I always thought the other ones, but that's uh, very common in Thailand to have concrete roads on the steep, steep like ragged, jagged cliffs. This would be great for the drone, wouldn't it? I have to come back with the drone. My drone is actually, DHL sort of fucked it up. It's bouncing between Thailand and Australia as we speak. So hopefully I'll have the drone we wait a few weeks. First world problems. And uh, but beautiful out here. Really, really nice. Really nice. Just quite epic. The, the, the camera doesn't really do it justice. You have to come out. This is the Chang Dao loop. Big leg shot there. Sexy, sexy. No money, no honey. And uh, beautiful climb, quite steep. and kicks up again. Kicks up again. See the cracks in the concrete there? So that was tarmac could be more cracked, apparently, apparently. Road engineers, chime in down below. Beautiful climb, the Chang Dao loop. If you're in Chiang Mai, check out the Chang Dao. Uh, we were aware of this loop by a few riders. Uh, uh, Griff, I think he lined it up a few weeks beforehand, and we thought we'll try a similar loop, but a different loop. And uh, we got the muddy version. It was really good. But it's so cool, man. I love how our community's has grown so much with legit people who are seeking adventure, seeking contribution, carving the fuck up, getting it done, enjoying the lean lifestyle. And there's some cows here. The cows didn't know that all they had to do is just pull over to the side and ride past them. The cows were sort of panicking a bit, as cows can do. So the cows made an assumption that we wanted to eat them, but we didn't. So we're trying not to spook them too much, but they were running. They're getting some exercise, I guess. And eventually they'll pull over and get it. But they just didn't get it. So what we thought we'd do, we'll just pull over and let them go. We'll pull over, let them get get ahead and get a, get around. So the 100k rides, there's more cows. I would recommend just, if you're going to stop, don't stop for more than a couple of minutes. You know, eat and drink on the bike. And just always be paying attention, you know. Be paying attention to the road because there might be cows, there might be dogs, there might be cracks in the pavement. Keep it under 150 watts. Watch out for traffic. And just relax, man. Just relax. Get out the saddle frequently. And start with the, you know, do a 50k ride. And then maybe do a 70K, 75k ride the next weekend. And then the weekend after that, do the 100k. You know? And then you can, hey, why not add a 25k's per week? And the weekend after that, do 125. You'll surprise yourself, especially if you're eating and drinking enough and pissing clear every two or three hours. You can ride a long, long way. You know, go to bed at 8, 9 p.m. on average. You know? If you get a late night here and then, it's all right. But just get out and do it and just pace yourself. But under 150 watts. You will surprise how, yourself how far you can go. And these cows just didn't get it, so we just like what we do. Um, I guess I got some exercise. They weren't panicking too much. They just sort of, you know, spooked the cows. But they can run pretty fast, man. They're, they're pretty, pretty fast little cows. But we were just sort of waiting for them to get an opening and head on off. Because if you charge past them, then they might just veer right into you and then you, you pop in your collarbone and the cows gore you to death and it's not really that fun on Strava. Gore to death on Strava. Green as you could really throw bodies in here. No one's going to find the body. If you've got any bodies to stash, chain the outlook, definitely. Just be, and again, pay attention in Thailand. I wouldn't hook the corners. See the greenness, the greenage on the road, like the moss? Really slippery. It can get really, really slippery. So you want to be uh, you want to be careful down there. Well, this is where Jacob lost his uh, camera, but they found it, and we were up the hill looking for it. <laughs> but it was all good. A little extra training, and the guys got to bond and chill out and hang out, and it was just a good day. We're sitting here, some jackfruit, 
on the tree, having some Sprite and Fanta, getting some water. I'm doing some social media stuff as I always seem to be doing with these smartphones. It's pretty good. Beautiful ride. And this is uh, this is right before it got really muddy. We're like, yeah, this is good. We're just doing it easy. We've done 100Ks by like 9 o'clock. So no worries. We'll be back for lunch. We got back at like 7, 8 o'clock that night. It was pretty epic. But it was just that on those days you're never going to forget, man. The, the rides where you bite off more than you can chew and keep going, they're the rides you remember forever. This was definitely I reckon the hardest 200k ride I've ever done because it was just didn't know how long this muddy road was going to go for, you know. Didn't just wasn't ex just for oh, be another couple of k's and it just kept going and going and going, and it took us like four hours or something to do 23k. It was it was really beautiful. It was very uh, it was good. First world problems end of the day, but get out there, carb the fuck up, get it done. 150 watts or less, go all day. We just cross this river. You be alright. This is awesome. This just got really <laughs> fucking interesting, and they do not look happy. They don't want any bullshit. <laughs> what do we do now, like? There's a little path around. Which, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go at the left. Yeah. So we didn't get charged. We we'll just stay together. <laughs> There's no. <laughs> little That's, awesome there. That's just his little defense call saying he doesn't like what I'm doing. But I'm gonna remove some of the little lice. Lice? Yeah, some oh, mites. Yeah. Is it safe or what? Sorry? Is Cameroon safe? Yeah.
mic. I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole bunch of them down the hill. How good we got our answer? No, elephant shit. Cow shit. Gearing. Yeah. Oh, rubbing. The vegan. <laughs> I realized in the morning that I forgot to pick up my bike shorts and laundry yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the worst excuse I've ever heard. Yeah. God, she was like, <laughs> they can wait this way this year, so she's like, my mother passed and gave me a lot of money and said to do this. <laughs> I was like, just give it to a fucking shelter and we 